I assume all of those numbers are ones that you would swear by, Peter. How is uh, the, the, the possibility of a rail strike affecting operations at Huntsman? Well, Tyler, thank you very much for the opportunity to join your show today. Sure. Uh, this is very worrisome for us. This is something that we need to start preparing for this coming week. So we will start looking at where we need to be idling lines, where we need to be uh, shutting down facilities. Uh, you take a small facility, that uh, a chemical plant, and it typically will produce hundreds of different grades of products. So we'll go into anything from agricultural to automotive to home construction to the, the food industry. Everything you look around you right now, everything that's high tech, everything that's lit, everything, your furniture, your carpeting, painting, everything. All of that has to do uh, with the chemical industry. And so th this this has this will reverberate very quickly through the economy what if there's not a deal here. What percentage of your company's output leaves factories by rail? Oh, it would well our, we would have an even greater number of raw materials that would come in to our business and that would be probably close to 50% of our raw wow. materials. Now, any business that loses 50% of our raw materials, it doesn't matter how how what your what your means of leaving the plant your plant's being shut down. Yeah. But I, I would say beyond that, about 40% of our outgoing freight is also shipped by rail as, as well. And, and Peter, do you have to, as you said, you have to figure out what to do with all of these, not you personally, but the, what, what to do with all of these containers of chemicals that are all around the nation. Do those have to be off the rails and somewhere safe in the event of a strike? Does, it, does that have to happen even if the strike does not materialize? Yes, yeah, so that's why we have to start right now. There'll be many products that we will stop shipping uh, in the next couple of days. If, if we can't get a firm guarantee that they will show up and be at either the customer's location or our location, uh, we will not be shipping those products. And so the, the supply chain will start getting backed up here in the next couple of days, regardless of what happens on December 5th. So what you're saying is there is an, there is a, an economic impact just because of the imminent threat of a strike. Oh yes, that 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 would certainly would be the case, and you'll see this reverberate not just in the chemical industry, but in the United States still gets a third of its electricity from coal, and so you, you think about virtually 100 percent of the coal that's moved uh, into power plants uh, will have to be stopped. I mean, we've we've seen a recent war on pipelines, uh, so there's less product on pipelines. We're no more reliant now our infrastructure on rail. So this reverberates throughout not just the chemical industry, but, but all industry sectors uh, will be feeling this very quickly. The, the ACC estimates that a one-month strike would trigger the loss of 700,000 jobs across multiple industries here and spike inflation with a 4% increase to the producer price index. Do you feel like the nation's leaders are taking this threat seriously enough? Is there more you would like them to be doing to avert a strike? Well, I'd like to see, and this is just my personal opinion, I'd like to see uh, President Biden, who has, has championed many of the causes from the unions and last September said that, uh, you know, we had a victory here, a win for the American people and a win for uh, unions and companies under the terms. It'd be great if he could use his bully pulpit, but ultimately this may well come down to Congress having to reach across on a bipartisan basis. This is not a, a red or a blue issue. Uh, th th this is not labor or, or management issue at this point. This is going to affect millions of people. It's going to affect hundreds of thousands of jobs. It's going to affect inflation. And, and Congress uh, can avert this from taking place. Well, that's what I want to ask you, uh, because, be, because as we just heard in the last hour, the administration has some, the bully pulpit, obviously, is one, but basically this is in Congress's lap. Peter, what are you doing as the head of an industry council and as the head of a large corporation to uh, create an outcome that is not damaging to, to your business and to the economy? What kind of lobbying? Where are you putting pressure? Well, in the last few hours, uh, about 30 of the largest uh, company CEOs got together and had, I think, a very productive meeting with representatives uh, from the White House. Uh, we had a, a very fulsome discussion where we talked about the impact of all of this. So it's, it's mm -hmm. very clear that they understand uh, the impact of this and, and for the president to be able to use his bully pulpit on this. But it's also going to be very important for each of these CEOs, and not just for the CEO and the leadership, but for the, the, uh, the, the associates of each of our companies, which number in the hundreds of thousands, uh, to be able to go out and, and to lobby 
uh, their legislators. Again, it doesn't matter what side of the aisle they're on.